although our church is dispersed, we meet together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We are delighted to be with you, but sad that not all will be able to come to church yet, and some will be ill or have died from COVID-19. This Paschal candle to remind us that the light of Christ is always with us. Christ, our light and our salvation. So Robert will now lead us in our wonderful hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. absolutely wonderful and to be honest I tried really hard not to hum along or sing thank you so much Robert wonderful hymn wonderful singing and thank you Julius for the company so we come to the little praise 
loving God, from the beginning, your spirit has moved over all creation, constantly challenging us, shaping us, and calling us to new birth. Rejoicing that your spirit is with us forever and delighting that we can worship in our church building again, we say together. Praise to you, O Lord. Heavenly Father, during these strange times and challenging times, we acknowledge that we've learned new skills, we've worshipped in new and different ways, we've considered our well-being, we've heard the birds sing and allowed creation to speak to us. We give thanks for blessings received. Praise to you, O Lord. And now a liturgy of lament. Loving God, who use us when we cry to you, and who through the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, knows the pain of body, mind, and spirit. We remember in silence those who have lost their lives, those who have lost their livelihoods during the this lockdown period, especially in this ministry area and across the whole world. Amen. Heavenly Father, over the past months we have faced new challenges and realities. Spared most, but taken many. And bruised us all. We are thankful for our safety, yet are mindful of the bereaved. We have kept the faith, yet there has been times of doubt. We have trusted you, yet there have been times of terror. We have kept ourselves safe, and others have risked all for us. We have been neighborly from a distance, mindful of the rules of lockdown. We come together as broken people who seek your wholeness once again and who dare to ask for the strength to sing a very new song. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Give us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty and most loving God, who forgives all who truly come to him for a new beginning, pardon you of all shortcomings, both real and imagined, and make you whole again through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We call it for today. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. The first reading is from the first book of Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the mountain of God, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in, the, in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelite have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, put your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response for the psalm is, Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. I will listen to what the Lord God will say, for he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they turn not again into folly. Truly his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Let us see your Lord your mercy and give us your saving power. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness look down from heaven. Let us see your Lord your mercy and give us your saving power. The Lord will indeed give us all that is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and direct his steps in the way. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving The second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans. 
Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or, who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is general who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are you to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are you to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The disciples said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Alleluia. Listen to the gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately after feeding the crowd with the five loaves and two fish, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on the side. While he dismissed the crowds, and after he dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain to by himself to pray. Evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, you command me to come unto the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. COVID-19. A pandemic of the 21st century is not only deadly, but it's awakened the individual. It's awakened the family, our communities, our society, and the world to a new way of living. People through throughout the world are anxious about the future. We're working from home, we're dealing with joblessness, we're living on, with uncertainties in our lives and we are dealing with grief and loss without contact. So is this the new normal? That's the million dollar question without an answer yet. And where is in all this? Is God in all this? During lockdown, now, people have Googled prayer on the internet like never before. Digital church, as we know, an online mission has increased, allowing those who are housebound to worship in congregations once again. Communities have come together to support each other. Neighbours have spoken to each other for the first time in years. Our NHS has a new and justified respect. Our oceans have cleaned 
our world has begun to heal and we have learned what it means to slow down. It has been a time of incredible anxiety. We have lost loved ones. We have sunk low and we have experienced times of great people have lost jobs and businesses and had to grieve alone. We've been unable to say goodbye properly and many of us are physically, emotionally and spiritually shattered and worn out and this storm still continues. I saw a cart the other day. It had a picture of the devil and Jesus on it and the devil said to Jesus, I shut down all of your churches with COVID-19 and Jesus said, no, on the contrary, I've opened up a church in every home. You see, that's the thing about God. I look below me and I see this beautiful display of flowers. And by, by the way, a huge thank you to our flower ladies who work tirelessly to bring such beauty into our church buildings. And as we look at these flowers, we're reminded that just as flowers bloom in stinking, God's people flourish in the worst of times. When our eyes are fixed on Christ, we can plan a way through the hardest times. We can find hope in the darkest situations and we can accomplish things we never thought possible. Today, we reopen the sun with those precious souls here present in the building alongside those precious souls, zooming in from home. From all over the country we worship together today, all over the world. Who'd have thunk it, eh? God's people will walk on water when our eyes on him. In a time of national or global disaster, it's easy to feel abandoned. Very quickly we can feel like we're sinking. Now it wasn't global or national disaster but I remember many years ago in my selection interview I was racked with nerves I was sitting in the waiting room and all of a sudden the interview door opened and I was escorted in and sat in front of the interview panel I think the SAS with an interrogation spotlight on me would have been less daunting but there we are and this bishop from Yorkshire says to me now tell me Wendy have you ever felt like God's abandoned you? And with a nervous gulp, I managed to nod a timid, yeah. And when was that, the bishop asked? About 10 seconds ago when I walked in this room, I replied. They laughed. I was actually deadly serious. At a time like this, of social distancing, fear and loss, and a virus that we are all to learn about, we may question God's love for us. We may feel like he's abandoned us. But in Matthew 14, we see a storm raging on the Sea of Galilee and the disciples feeling abandoned by Jesus. But Peter obeys Christ, who was right there within his reach. He takes a step of obedience. And that step meant leaving the safety of the boat and taking a step of obedience following the small voice in the 1911 in the 9-11 terrorist attack god ran into the flames through the actions of the brave new york city firefighters in the beirut explosion god grabbed newborn babies from their incubators through the actions of quick thinking nurse. in this virus god is working day and night to produce a vaccine through the actions of our incredible researchers and scientists and those who suffer when any crisis hits through the actions of you and me. In the gospel this morning, Jesus proves the disciples and should give us hope in the midst of any storm. Today we are reminded that God has the authority. He has the knowledge, has the protection the love and the divine power that we so desperately need. So I was telling you about the feeling of for my selection interview with the bishop. Well, let me tell you, looking back, I know now he never abandoned me. He was right beside that day and all the way. Little did I realize that that day I was being interviewed for the most incredible journey of my life. 
a journey that led me here to you all, a journey that I thank God for every day, and a journey I wouldn't trade for the world. At times, life gets difficult. At times, we will feel like we're sinking. There are times we may feel God has abandoned us, but those are the times we need to look for his face, to delve into scripture, to run to him in prayer, to search out God's still small voice, because that's when we realize he's been there all along with Christ by our side. We will walk on water in every situation we find ourselves in. Our God is a God who will never desert us, never abandon us, never leave us. One night, a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from his life. For each scene, he noticed two sets of footprints, in one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times of his life. This really bothered him and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I've noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there's only one set of footprints. I don't understand why when I needed you the most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, my precious, precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During the times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Amen. Just take a moment to reflect on that wonderful, powerful message. We say the words of the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. The day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. The psalmist said, mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Help us, Lord, to be people who speak the truth. Let our yes be yes and our no be no. 
Help us to be people who are merciful to others, even when they let us down very badly indeed. Help us to be people who set our lives apart for you, that we might reflect your love in all our relationships and in our dealings with other people. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you. All right, and how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? We often shrink from sharing our faith. But give us courage, Lord, to commend our faith to other people. By the words that we say, by the things that we do, and by the way that we live. Above all, help us to commend our faith by the love that we have for each other and for our neighbours. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus said, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Abba Father, in these days of disease and anxiety and fear, help us to look to our Lord Jesus Christ who walks alongside us as with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. May we receive from him the courage, the strength and the determination that we need at times. May his presence be a light in these days of darkness. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we can meet together in church once more and to enjoy each other's company and fellowship. We are mindful, though, that COVID has not gone away. Help us to keep safe, to observe the appropriate social distancing and the measures that have been put in place to keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father in heaven, our hearts and our prayers go out to the people of Lebanon this morning. We pray for the injured and the dying. We had prayed for those who have lost their homes and everything that they have. We pray for the medical services and healthcare workers. We ask you to comfort those who mourn. And we commend those who have lost their lives to your loving care. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, as the COVID pandemic continues to sweep around the world, we pray for the World Health Organization, for those who must make far-reaching decisions. We pray for the medical and scientific advisors. We pray, Lord, that an effective vaccine may be found and that effective treatments may be discovered. And at this time of the easing of lockdown in so many countries, help us to all play our part and behave responsibility, showing our care one for another in the way that we respond to the easing of lockdown. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your church at this time, struggling to minister in difficult circumstances. We pray for John, our Archbishop, for Cherry, our Bishop, for Sue and Wendy, our priests here. Give them the wisdom, the strength, the determination, and the courage that they need at this time to offer the leadership and pastoral care. Lord, in your mercy. Pray for those who are ill at this time, especially those with COVID-19. We pray too for those with other serious illness and for whom treatment has been delayed. We pray for anxious families who cannot support their loved ones as they would like. We pray for those in hospital without the support of visitors. We pray for those known to us who are ill at this time. Remember, especially this morning, Shirley Phillips and Maddie Bradley. 
And in a few moments of quiet, let us all bring those who are on our hearts today to the loving of our Heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who have died recently. We commend them to your love and safekeeping. Lord, in your mercy, and in a few moments of quiet, we offer our own supplications to our Heavenly Father. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, just you draw and welcome us, emptied of pride and hungry for your grace, to this your kingdom's feast. Nowhere can we find the food for which our souls cry out, but here, Lord, at your table, invigorate and nourish us, good Lord, that in and through this bread and wine, your love may meet us and your life complete us in the power and glory of your kingdom. Amen. strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Peace to the Lord. Always. And also with you. Well, let's give one another a big wave. You can't run around the church and uh, help them. So, I wanted to see you. Now, as we come to the uh, setting and preparation of the table, uh, can uh, Julius just just play a little bit of music and that will be time to play.
gifts and grace of God. We, we take this wine to follow Christ's example and obey his command. The Lord be with you. And so with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy. At all times and in all places to give you thanks and holy Father, heavenly King, almighty everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. He is your eternal word. Through him you created the universe and formed us men and women in your own image. You sent him to be our Saviour, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. Upon the cross, he opened wide his arms of mercy, embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering and death. On the first day of the week, you raised him from the dead and open to us the gate of everlasting life. Through him you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us your own sons and daughters. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Paul, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, take heed. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave him some. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many. For the sin, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remember the saving death and resurrect your Son. We offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gift to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit. Upon all of us who share this bread and this cup, strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of yours, through him, with him, in you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, we boldly pray in another time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 
we break this bread. Share in the body of Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Before we come to the sending out, this might be a good notice. Uh, my apologies, my microphone was switched off through some through through, through the Eucharistic prayer. So unfortunately, those at home sort of probably didn't pick it up. Uh, just to remind you, as we uh, conclude this service, and um, please leave behind your tracking and tracing forms, which uh, you should have dutifully signed. But all of the paper, the order of service, the weekly sheets, please take away with you. Uh, you will be taken uh, and led out of the church uh, one pew at a time. And uh, can I just remind you about mm. such times as you leave the church and, uh, you know, even though you can gather outside for a little natter, try and keep the, uh, the two metre distance rule, because family, you get closer close and this always taps you on the, the shoulder or the back and um, I, I know how hard it is really uh, but it's been wonderful to to have you here today uh, just to say that we will continue to offer to those at home this uh, zoom service we'll have a little review after words all the technical issues and sort out the priests who can't put microphones on and off properly and uh, fighting with all the technology <laughs> it's always one it's always one uh, but it's, it's been wonderful to have everybody who has made this such a, a special occasion. Wendy mentioned the, the flowers, so thank you. As soon as you come into the church and you see a few flowers, you think, oh, it's a bit more normal. <laughs> uh, for Graham, for responding, uh, for those who have been stewarding, uh, a wonderful team there. And, and just thank you for everybody who's been working so hard behind the scenes to to make really the ministry ongoing and uh, as Alan uh, beautifully prayed uh, you know pray for for Wendy and myself because you know we after the time we do what we do in and we you know, uh, you know we, we are kind of praying about the next steps so you know be, be with us so uh, I'm not going to do too much on here just to a little reminder for those at All Saints there will be a PCC meeting seven o'clock on Tuesday via Zoom and I'll be sending the link out uh, tomorrow. So shall we come to the sending out? Give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your words be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have been the tokens of your love shine with a light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. 
Glory to you forever. We say together. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge thy kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for his sheep, bring us and all who respond to his voice into one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and those you pray for this day and forever. Amen. In peace, to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Ooh. Just a little word in my ear. Just to say, I think we have uh, on Zoom uh, a, a golden wedding. That's for Rona and Martin. So congratulations and hope you have a fantastic day. <laughs> So, so um, we will hopefully see you very, very soon and um, go with God's blessing.